honourable gentleman for, for the speech he's just made, which I know was deeply personal and, and very difficult to give, but actually does really illuminate what we're talking about here. And, and overall, our approach has to be to prevent harm. Uh, and, and I think it's in, it's in that spirit, I think, that, that we're all addressing uh, this subject. Um, but I think it's very, it's, we're in a deeply insatisfactory position where we are now uh, in terms of executing this delivery, uh, and we do need to do better. Now, one of the reasons I championed the importance of relationship and sex education in schools was because I'd become very uh, concerned about the increasingly sexualized environment in our society, which sees young people exposed to sexuality and sexual practices before they are sufficiently mature to handle it. And, and as my, my uh, honourable friend has said, you know, social media and the internet mean that we are all just one click away from pornography. And the content of some of that material is of a much more exploitative nature than perhaps was available pre-internet. And, and this is why we, you know, we, we really need to be equipping all our children with the tools to be able to uh, protect uh, themselves. Um, and really, to be able to teach uh, young people about sex in a way that really emphasises the emotional and the intimacy and all the issues around consent and enjoyment, when actually their first introduction will be about the purely physical aspects of it and the harm that that, that can do. It means that behaviours can be normalised before children are able to properly understand what a healthy sexuality is based on in terms of intimacy and consent. And it's led to an environment which is very difficult both for girls and for boys. And I think we need to... Uh, to, to ensure that we are addressing the emotional needs of both sexes, which are both different. Um, so for me, the importance of RSC is all about emphasising the primacy of consent and respect. I want boys to feel that they're able to call out sexually abusive behaviour uh, when they witness it uh, by their peers, because we know from, from recent campaigns that actually being victims of sexually aggressive behaviour does start in schools. Uh, I had a horrendous uh, uh, example of this when I, I went to visit a local school on International Women's Day and I was with a group of, of uh, 13 year old girls and it was one of those visits which you know, sometimes they go really well don't they and you get loads of questions. This was one of those where it was actually really difficult. So I just lobbed it out there, how many of you have been harassed? Every single one of them. And for most of them, it happened in school. And that's exactly what we're talking about. And so we really, I want to make sure that girls feel empowered to be able to call this out too and, and, and to not just have to accept it. You know, they tell me that they're be, being pressurised into sharing intimate pictures, which are then shared by phone. And, and as one girl said to me, if you make a stand, you just attract more attention to yourself and you end up getting more harassment. And if you comply, you're easy. You know, what are we supposed to do in those, in those circumstances? And I guess one of the difficulties with making sure that we start tackling these things at an age-appropriate time is when is that? <laughs> because uh, the exposure to this uh, content uh, you know, is frankly un unregulated. We, 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 it, children can be exposed to it at a very young age. So I had had high hopes that RSC would empower our girls uh, and, and really to be an important tool uh, in the war against uh, sexual violence. But this, as some of the examples that my honourable friend has highlighted today, I've been horrified at some of the content that is being, being uh, delivered into schools. As she says, anyone can be a provider. And I, I do think that the DfE needs to actually get a hold on this if this is going to be, if, if, it's, going to make, if it's going to protect our children uh, from harm. I mean, she highlighted the dice game, and I have to say I was utterly, utterly uh, appalled to see that, because again, it reduces sex to just being about penetrative acts. Now, forgive me, you know, we really do need to be, you know, <laughs> at risk of being romantic and sentimental, but that's, you know, a healthy sexual relationship is about fulfilment for both parties. It's not just about um, the physicality of these things. And and as the honourable uh, gentleman said earlier, you know, it's about safety. It's about safe sex. You know, a dice that talks about, you know, 
objects and, 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 and where these can be assessed. You know, that isn't a healthy approach to how we teach people about safe sex. And, and you hear as well that you know, young girls now think the way to avoid getting pregnant is to have anal sex. That's safe sex. Well, that is not without its, its other risks. And we can be teaching people to have a much more healthy approach to their sexual relationships without it just being reduced to uh, physical uh, interaction. I, I can see, I, I do have more to say, but I, I, at the risk of crowding other people out, I will stop it there. But just to say that, you know, if we are to, you know, you know churn out healthy children with a healthy respect for each other and a much more uh, a safer environment for both girls and boys, I think the Department for Education really needs to get a proper hold on making sure that good content is circulated and bad content in this field is exterminated. <laughs>